A UPS is the biggest insurance policy you can buy for your NAS and should almost be classified as a necessity. I recently lost power at my house and fortunately, my NAS was hooked up to my UPS so it safely shut down and turned back on when power resumed. In this video, we're going to take a look at why you should purchase a UPS and how to configure it. We will also look at how to configure the network UPS feature so that you can automatically shut down other devices when your UPS is on battery power. So before we get started, we need to look at why a UPS is important. For the most part, all computers are sensitive to power loss, but NAS devices are especially sensitive. Since most NAS devices are utilizing RAID, in the unlucky event that a write operation is occurring at the same time as power loss occurs, there's a chance that you'll power on your NAS to a crashed volume. In cases like this, the only solution you'll find is to restore your entire NAS from a backup if you're fortunate enough to have one. If not, you'll only be able to restore the data you backed up. Without getting too technical, this is because RAID works by writing data to multiple disks. If a write operation is occurring as sudden power loss occurs, there's a chance that the entire volume can corrupt and crash. The data being written to multiple disks is also the reason why a RAID array can rebuild a failed hard drive, assuming you're using something like RAID 5, 6, or SHR. So with all of that said, this is the reason why I suggest a UPS device. A UPS device is a battery backup unit. If you lose power, the devices connected to the UPS will automatically start using the battery. All UPS devices work the same, meaning they give power to the devices plugged into them in the event of power loss. However, UPS devices generally have a small runtime, meaning that it's important that your NAS can automatically power down from the UPS. Not all UPS devices come with a USB cable that allows communication between the UPS and Synology NAS, so I put links in the description for four devices that do. There are four APC units that I recommend, and the one you pick should be dependent on what you like plugged into it. If you're simply plugging your NAS and nothing more into the UPS, the 425VA model is fine. If you're planning on plugging multiple devices in, I'd suggest getting the 1500VA. In the event that you'd like to split the difference, I also linked a 600VA and an 1100VA unit. All these devices will communicate with your NAS and safely power down the NAS in the event of power loss. Moving on to the configuration, power down the NAS and plug it into a battery plus surge outlet on the UPS. Plug the USB cable into your NAS and ensure that it's connected to the data port on the UPS. If it is, you should be able to open up the control panel, select hardware and power, then UPS. Enable UPS support and ensure the UPS type is set as USB UPS. You can then set the time before the disk station enters standby mode by customizing the time or letting it shut off when the UPS battery is low. You can then check the device information to ensure that the NAS and UPS are communicating properly. Finally, head over to the general section and ensure that restart automatically when power supply is fixed is enabled. With all of these settings enabled, the NAS will safely shut down and turn on when power is restored. Now it's great to have your NAS plugged into a UPS and safely shutting down, but if you have other servers or devices connected to this UPS, it's important that they shut down as well. This can be accomplished by configuring the network UPS server. The network UPS server allows your Synology NAS to power other devices down when it enters battery mode. Without getting too technical, this allows the NAS to operate as a NUT server where other devices can see that the UPS is on battery mode and safely shut down. In order to configure this, each client, meaning devices that you'd like to automatically shut down, need to be configured properly. There's a great article on Reddit by a user named rjilks that explains how to configure Linux, Windows, and Mac devices to monitor the Synology NAS and power down when the battery power is low. I'll quickly show the process on a Linux device so that you can see how it operates, but once again, you have to ensure that each one of your devices is configured as a NUT client. After installing NUT, setting the mode as client, and adding my Synology device as the UPS to monitor, a shutdown command can be found in the UPS mon configuration file. The shutdown command I run says to shut down the device when the UPS has been on battery power for 5 minutes. 
This can be configured based on the settings you'd like, but the important thing to understand is that each device must be configured as a NUT client. Just make sure that the UPS battery will last long enough to shut down the device. It's also important to only add devices that are physically connected to the UPS. The configuration can be slightly more customized, but this is a really simple example. On the NAS, you need to enter in the IP address of the client, which will now allow the client and NAS to communicate. Please keep in mind that you'll need to have network connectivity for this to work, meaning you'll most likely need to plug in your router, switch, or access point to the UPS. In this case, you probably want to spring for a unit with a slightly higher battery capacity as you'll be powering multiple devices. With all of this configured and set up properly, your NAS will not only power down safely in a power outage, but it will also power down the other devices connected to this UPS, assuming that they're configured properly. This is the cheapest form of insurance that you can provide for a NAS device that costs hundreds to thousands of dollars with hard drives installed. As mentioned before, in the description there are links to the APC devices that I recommend, as well as the Reddit post explaining how to set up NUT clients. I'm hoping that this video helped, and if it did, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching.